Hi, I'm Lionel, this is Tech Loto, and this is my walkthrough and review video for the Fitbit OS 4.1. Now I was actually doing a video for the Fitbit OS 4.0.2 and then they brought out the new update, so I've had to redo that video. All you need to do is go into the Fitbit app, make sure that your Bluetooth is switched on, and follow the prompt that tells you to update the tracker. Now I had a few issues where I was clicking the update option, it was going into it and it just kept on saying it was searching. I did so many things like restarting my Fitbit, restarting my phone, switching off the Bluetooth in the location, switching it back on and nothing worked. In fact my Fitbit Ionic just automatically unpaired with my phone. So the only process that worked for me was connecting the Fitbit Ionic to my computer, making sure that the Bluetooth on my computer was switched off, making sure that any other smartwatches that I had around were completely far away from my phone and setting up the Fitbit with my phone again like it's brand new. And that automatically gave me the new update. And you can see on the screen that that's the process that I'm going through, pairing it again, entering the code, setting up the Wi-Fi. And I think that's probably where the issue is with the Wi-Fi. But anyways, if you haven't had any of these issues, just click the update button and you'll see that it starts to download. Make sure your Fitbit's charged and make sure that your phone is charged. What helps me is keeping them both in charge at the same time and making sure that they're right next to each other while the update is happening. So while that's going on, you can leave your phone. And once the update's complete, your phone will tell you that the Fitbit is ready. You need to go through all the prompts on your phone just to make sure that everything's up and running and so that you don't have any issues. So now that that's ready, let's look at the new features. In my opinion, since Fitbit's gone premium and since their focus has been on the Fitbit Versa rather than the Fitbit Ionic, most of their features are towards new customers and they're not really considering the people who've paid £300 for a watch that was meant to be their flagship watch. So let's look at some of the features that come with the Fitbit OS 4.1. If you have the Fitbit Versa 2, you'll be able to use Alexa and you'll have an option to choose for the screen to always be on. For the rest of us mere mortals, you can just see that there's been a redesign of the icons, They've tried to make it a lot simpler. I prefer the way the exercises looked before, but apparently you can have up to 20 now. I guess that reduces the amount of memory that it's taken up by making it more icon based rather than picture based. But here, what's actually quite cool is that you can set a goal for your workout. So how long do you want to work out and how many calories do you want to burn during your workout? I expect that you'll get a prompt once you've reached that goal. The other features that they've added is a calendar. So it's more agenda rather than calendar. It lets you know what's coming up. I've given it the permissions that I needed on my phone, but I guess it's not up and running yet. Let me know if you want me to go into that in another video. Something that's actually pretty cool is the Clocks app, where you can actually select 5 clock faces, save them to your Fitbit, and switch over as and when. I'm really happy with the clock face that I have, so I won't be using this as much. I'm really happy with the Eugene Bow e-face. You can find that on the Fitbit app. I just like that it has everything and I'm able to look at all my stats at once. Another new feature with this update is that you're able to look at your sleep score. So when you're on the home screen, scroll up and you can scroll all the way to the sleep section, see your sleep score and see details about your sleep. The other thing that Fitbit's done is they've added a quick shortcuts menu. This allows you to set your watch to do not disturb, sleep mode. From here you can quickly control your brightness level and you can also control your automatic screen wake options. And that's pretty much it. That's the Fitbit OS 4.1. I do appreciate that Fitbit is thinking of different options for users. They're trying to make the Fitbit less dependent on smartphones. That's something that the Ionic has always been about. But with the Fitbit Premium app, you're losing a lot of the options that you would think you would get for paying £300 for a watch. But I'll leave you guys to be the judge. Let me know what you think of the new update and let me know what you think of Fitbit Premium. Leave a comment if you'd like me to do a video on Fitbit Premium. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, remember to like and subscribe to Tech Loto for more Fitbit walkthroughs and reviews. Visit the Teespring page to get some Tech Loto merch and don't forget to visit the website.